Hey everybody, welcome back. Tom Motoresto, LLC here in Bradenton, Florida. I'm going to do a video on uh, how I built, you know, designed, fabricated, and built the custom trailer hitch on the Concourse 14 here that I towed the tag along trailer with. Um, I don't have any actual video of that uh, process because I wasn't doing videos then because that was September of 2019. But I do have a lot of stills. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the stills in and narrate over them and explain how I did it, why I did certain things, design features, and what I had in mind when I was, was doing it. I will tell you that it was a pretty involved process. It took me about a week um, between you know design, fabrication, and then painting, getting it back on. But it's performed flawlessly. Done three out-of-state trips up into either Georgia or North Carolina towing that trailer. And had no problem whatsoever. So uh, my buddy here, which is the supervisor for the day, he's going to be helping us out and he's going to be supervising and uh, giving me guidance on making sure that you enjoy this video. So I hope you do exactly that and thanks for watching. I'm going to start off with a picture of a more in a more completed stage of the fabrication because I kind of just wanted to show you the overview and where I was going with this. Uh, naturally, the objective is to provide a good solid platform for towing a trailer, uh, you know, with the weight limitations uh, in consideration, of course, because I had an idea of what a trailer would weigh, and I didn't even have a trailer yet, but I wanted to make sure that I was able to fabricate a hitch um, to actually uh, tow something, you know, with a 1 in 7 eighths ball, you know, class 1. So what I ended up doing was going on the internet and finding um, pictures and sales information of commercially available hitches for the Concourse 14. And I won't say I copied them, but I used them as a template um, in the design process to determine you know, where, where I wanted this thing to affix to, which we'll uh, cover in a little bit, and the overall shape and layout of the design and where it should fall in relation to the rear wheel and not only the side to side, but back to front of the rear wheel location. Now I started with just one side uh, and experimenting and what I used to bend this tubing with, by the way, this is, uh, what's this tubing? This is 7 8 diameter OD tubing and I believe it is um, uh, 1 8 inch wall if I'm not mistaken. Anyway, it's pretty good tubing. It's um, definitely uh, DOM or drawn over mandrel tubing, so it's pretty high quality. It wasn't terribly expensive. I got it at a local steel supplier. And uh, what I ended up doing was cutting it to, you know, way longer than I need to and to make sure I, you know, didn't short myself. And then I ended up throwing it into a bender that I bought from Harbor Freight. Now, it's a pretty big bender. It's one of those big uh, Fomunga ones um, that you can bend like a super duper Superman pipe. But what I ended up doing was I took it and just used the smallest dies that it had. And I, I took this tubing and filled it with play sand. Um, each piece that was bent like this with somewhat of an intricate bend, I filled it with play sand and then capped the ends. I kind of made these caps that just kind of fit over pretty snugly. We had to bang them on and off with a hammer. And then once I did that, I was, you know, I, I would just put it in the bender and the play sand would essentially fill the airspace inside and provide a circumferential outward pressure when the pipe is bent so it would resist kinking. So that's what I started with. I started with this this right side and then started bending it around. And uh, I'll, I'm gonna go over the uh, how I did the actual points where it affixes to the inner part of the subframe uh, where I just swapped it out with an aftermarket bolt here in a little bit. But um, that's a little bit more complicated how I did that. But as far as the bending and the tubing goes, that's what I started with doing the right side. And once I got that right side done, I simply duplicated it for the left side. In this clip here, what I have is the shot of how both of these, the left and the right side, are mounted uh, to the uh, bike. Uh, it goes into uh, part of the subframe. And what I ended up doing was this is the actual bar of the hitch you can see right here, coming past that brake line. And then it narrows down to a flat. And how I did that was I took some uh, I think it was either 3 16 or quarter inch flat stock uh, and I kind of just cut it down to the appropriate length and thickness or width uh, and I um, took a piece of solid round bar and then cut a slot in the solid round bar and shoved the, the, the flat stock into it and welded it together and the solid round bar is the appropriate size to go inside the 
uh, 7 8 um, OD pipe. And so once I shoved it in there, I welded it all up, and then any bends I needed to make was done after the fact uh, to make sure I got alignment. And that nut you see right there is on the other side of a 10.9, 10 millimeter bolt that comes through from where the uh, passenger uh, foot pegs are. I'll show you that here in a sec. That would be it from the front here is this bolt right there all is that uh, bolt that comes through the back side. And you can see the hitch is coming through right there, the actual bar stock for the hitch, or the tubing rather. And that comes in and so it attaches right there. So that's where I did the front. That's the front furthest forward spot where the hitch actually mounts to the bike. Once I got the mounting taken care of up front at least that I just showed you in that previous clip, uh, I needed to figure out um, how this thing was going to run along the side of the rear tire. Now, as you can see, I'm going to put an arrow here. It's kind of difficult to see. Perhaps I can zoom up here in editing to show you this part. But there's a little bit of a bend where it goes back into toward the wheel um, where it initially wanted to come out. So essentially, you have to have a certain amount of bending and clearance inside there to clear those features. And then it comes and bends back inwards toward the rear tire and you can kind of see that angle if I didn't do that what would end up happening was it would have hit the saddle bag and I do have a, a, a picture coming up um, that I'll uh, show real quick uh, with the bags on and the clearance between the bar the bags and the actual you know bike tire itself but that was the reason why this shot was taken is to show that uh, particular layout in regards to the angles um, that I needed to achieve to make this thing run in the appropriate place. There's not a lot of real estate in there to deal with. So what I wanted to do is make sure I made the best of it and made the most efficient use of it. Although I shot this later on in the fabrication, I figured I'd throw it in here because we just talked about that. This is the clearance that I have with the both sides, that is, between the actual bike and the saddlebag. As you can see, there is not a lot of room in there to play. At this point, it was time to figure out how I would hang the hitch, essentially, from the bike. Because, you know, the front um, attachment points give you X and Y, you know, the left and right and in and out uh, securing of this, if you look at it from those axes. Um, but we don't have any Z yet. In other words, it can still go up and down. So this is where it hangs. So we have that, uh, we have that rigidity, you know, so, because obviously it's not going to do much if it's just flopping around back there. So what I ended up doing was I ended up choosing which of the two bolts that come through uh, from underneath the seat to actually attach the, uh, that particular bracket that you see in this picture on. Here's another view on the other side of that particular bracket, and I may bounce back and forth on these photos here just to warn you ahead of time. But the, the reason why I did it this way is there's essentially two places that penetrate down through from underneath the seat that are both you know, pretty good size M8 bolts that uh, do various functions in regarding the subframe. And this was the furthest of the two back, you know, furthest back of the two, which is good because, you know, you want to be as far away from the fulcrum as possible and then give it enough support toward the end. Even further back would have been nice, but there wasn't any way to do that. Um, now, naturally, you have to remove all the plastics off the bike to do this. I should have mentioned that earlier, of course. But these plastics come off real easy. And a couple of screws... And then you pop those, uh, what do they call them, those uh, push nails out. And uh, then, you know, you can take the plastics off, like I said, real easy. So once that's all exposed, you can see the bolts. And then I simply made the brackets, put the bolts in, you know, loosely and saw where the brackets, brackets landed on the actual tubing. And then bent an L bracket, and I'll put an arrow to that lower L bracket. You can see that nut or bolt sticking out of it right here. So that little L bracket there wraps underneath the tubing, of course, and is welded in place. So essentially the tubing is resting on the bracket and the bracket is welded to the tubing. So I thought that would be a better way to do it. And then, of course, that uh, bracket just bolts uh, to the brackets that are the, back, the actual steel that comes down from the spot on the frame. And, of course, that's for ease of removal. Um, I can actually take this off because that bolt is is clear of the plastic it's below the plastic once the plastic is in place so i can remove the hitch no problem the only thing would be a little of that metal from that bracket sticking down from 
the frame would be visible and it's no big deal. It's not going to hurt anything. So the, the whole hitch can come off if necessary for a major repair or maintenance. And, and I'll discuss how I do tire changes with this here in a bit. But uh, basically, that's how both sides are set up. It's extremely strong. The material, I believe, is either 3 sixteenths. I think it's 3 sixteenths steel. It's mild steel, but it's still pretty strong. And, of course, uh, you know, good welding practice, best I can muster at least, uh, to hold this thing together. And all the hardware, similarly to the other ones, are self-locking hardware as far as those types like aviation nuts, you know, the Teflon nuts and so forth. And I do check them once in a while, and they are always tight. They always remain tight. At this point, I had to engineer some sort of a support for it. Uh, I, my objective here was to come up with as much of a triangle as I could to bridge that uh, support between where it's mounted, of course, and where it, uh, the business end, of, you know, where it attaches to the trailer. So as you can see, this really forms a pretty good triangle. Um, the, uh, naturally, the top part of this you know, hitch where it bends is not going to support that. So we need some sort of a support that goes straight, uh, forms the bottom of a triangle, and it's a, it gives it that columnar or that linear support um, from the point of, that the stresses are being put on it to the point where the thing is mounted and it's going to absorb those stresses. So uh, the, the straight pipe wouldn't exactly work right there because this end comes down to a point or, a, you know, the RV really would be the way to describe it. And I'll show you that here in a minute. So what we had to do is we had to come out straight with the pipe and then bend it in toward where that V would meet, essentially toward the center of the rear wheel. And so that's why it's shaped this way. And, and I did it as far back and as far down on the hitch as I could without it interfering. So that's why you see it in the shape it's in and both sides are fabricated exactly the same. As far as the connection to the pipe, um, I made radiuses in the cross bar you see there but I had to do it by hand I don't have a milling machine or anything to do that with I just ground the radiuses in so they would fit as close as possible and then tack welded them and finish welded them all the welding was done on this project off the bike though there was no tack welding or any welding at all done on the bike because I was worried about the computer so everything had to be clamped in place brought over to the bench and welded up there this is a pretty good shot of you, where you can see the two pieces coming together. Um, I don't have the uh, braces on yet, um, as you can see, at least on that left side, but you can see that I'm getting to that point where I can um, get this lined up and squared to the rear wheel. Uh, the forthcoming shots are going to show you how I did that um, and get that even, and then it's kind of complicated to explain how I actually did that bottom piece where the hitch ball is mounted, but I'll do the best I can. But I just wanted to show you this shot that gives you an idea of what I'm talking about as far as it bending inwards into a V and those cross braces having to accommodate that and coming out and then diverting in as they go a little bit downwards too because it's a slightly downward angle from that upper bar and then make that connection for strength. I don't want this to get confusing and I probably should have put this shot before the last one with those uh, braces but... Um, this is how I squared up those tubes, and essentially I did that even, well, actually I did it while I was making those um, cross braces up, because it's kind of one of these things you got to do at the same time, because the operations are so closely related. So what I ended up doing was, you can see um, toward the um, right there in the shot, um, alongside the brake disc, that's a one, two, three block, and that one, two, three block has got a small nut and a bolt going through one of the holes in the rotor, to keep it flat up against the rotor and then the uh, that actual square, the straight longer part of the square brings that out to the back behind the bike perpendicular to the rear tire. So now I can measure off of that and get a reference to the down tubes. Now I probably should have put this in one way before the last segment when I talked about those cross braces, but that would have been a little bit more confusing than this probably is. So well, you have to understand that those cross tubes were done in concert with this particular operation because I have to have the, the back of the bike square as far as the down tubes go before I can do those bracing because naturally they would be cattywampus when I get it done. You know, one of those um, down tubes would be out further than, than the other and that would throw off where the hitch ball is mounted, that part, which I'll go into here in a bit. Now, so basically 
it's it's one of these things where you have to do everything at the same time and just go back and forth back and forth uh, i'm not sure if i mentioned it before but all the welding on this hitch was done off the bike every stitch of it because uh, i didn't want to take any chance of frying any computers so what i would do in this case is i would square it up bend the tubing a little bit as you can see it is square now and then i would um, cut and uh, test fit that uh, bracing member clamp it in place um, we're still in dealing with individual sides here take the the side off bring it over to the bench tack weld it put it back on test it take it back off finish weld it and then that side would be done so that's how this progressed and it's one of these things again that gets a little complicated because you got to do essentially two operations at the same time but that is how it got done at this point in time we got to cover where the hitch mounts and how the down tubes the back of the hitch actually comes together because in this photo everything is actually connected so the hitch would have to be removed as an assembly so how how I did that is pretty interesting but I'm not going to use this photo to show you I don't really have a clear picture of anything not mounted to this back part of the uh, hitch assembly unfortunately but I do have a better picture um, that I'll interject about right here that shows um, what I mean by that and it gives a little bit more clearer picture and I'll kind of explain um, why it appears to be the way it appears. I designed the hitch so you could actually mount it either on the top or the bottom as you can see it in this picture. Uh, this particular picture however gives you a really good clear view of the top of it which you know clears the path of view for how this thing is actually made. And what I really did was just box it in. I boxed in the um, you know the actual tubing with some flat stock and then just made a top and a bottom to it. And just did the appropriate angle so of course that front piece is lower than the back piece and then the top piece therefore is fairly level the reason i did this is because i wasn't sure of the height of what the trailer would be i wanted some versatility to it um, i figured about the center of the rear axle of the bike with um, a certain amount of compression of the rear suspension you know assuming a certain amount of tongue weight would be about right but i just wasn't sure so i wanted to have some versatility as i said before um, so in this particular picture, it's bolted from the bottom versus the other one, which is bolted from the top. But you can see in this picture really pretty clearly the boxing in of that and the nut that's welded underneath the top piece of that, um, of that boxing, I should say, the cross top member of that back of the hitch. And that's, I forgot what the thread is on that, but it's just a, before I box that in completely, I just put that nut and welded it to the bottom so it's a weld nut. And then that bolt um, that you can see in the picture um, just goes through and tightens up into that. I've made some minor changes to it since this picture was taken when I was first mocking this up, which I'll go into in the outro. But otherwise, it's pretty simple how I made that. But there is a couple of more interesting things about it that I wanted to cover. And I'm going to have to zoom up on this particular picture right here to do it. Oh, I lied. I'm actually going to use another picture, but here's the first one. As you can see, right in the center of the screen, there's two dots that are in line with that longitudinal plane of that down tube. Those are pins. Now, this is kind of complicated, but I'll explain how I did this. Um, I, as I said before, had to weld this, in my opinion, off of the bike completely. When I brought those two pieces together, however, there wasn't any practical way to clamp everything together, take it off the bike, and then weld it without it moving. So what I ended up doing was I ended up using the the best drill that I could at an appropriate size, make some pins or use some pins that I had. I can't remember which. And when I had everything where I wanted it to be while it was on the bike, I drilled and tapped those pins in, not tapped them, but actually, you know, hammered them in place to lock that together as best as I could. Now, naturally, there's going to be some forces that can overcome it. But if you're real careful, you can take that off, clamp it in the vise, and then start tack welding and then once it's tack welded you're pretty much home free so that's the first part that's how i did it on both sides where this little box area articulates with those down tubes of the uh, of the hitch itself uh, to make sure that it wasn't going to move when i took it off to do the tacking and final welding okay so i'm going to go back to the other picture to show you the next part now if you look to the left and right of that hole on the upper part of the hitch obviously i have it bolted to the bottom part there but to the upper part of the hitch that hole that is currently unoccupied <laughs> to the left and right of it is two pieces that are welded 
um, that look like their shoulders, and that's exactly what they are. And what that is, of course, is to prevent the hitch from rotating left to the right, uh, because with only one bolt in the center of that, um, you can easily overcome uh, that bolt uh, torque and then start twisting it back and forth, which I didn't want it to happen. So I put those in and ground those pieces back with a hand grinder to uh, make sure that the piece that I fit in there is very snug. So when that's bolted in place, there's no way that that thing can rotate, uh, uh, you know, radially, if you will, in relationship to the center of that bolt um, to go back and forth. It stays perfectly straight. So those are the two things that I wanted to point out about uh, where the down tubes come together, where the hitch is mounted, and how I fabricated all that together. The remainder of this is really just a few shots of how it looks finished. When I took it off and painted it, got it all back together, and put it back on, and like I said, I've, been, I've used it a number of times and it works real well. Um, I'd like to cover the electrical in this one, but it's going to be way too long, and plus that's all buttoned up. So I think I'll save that for a time where maybe I have to go back into the bike for something and take some covers off, and I'll show you how I did the uh, electrical hookups for the trailer lights and stuff. Uh, again, that's a project in itself with the, putting the light controller in there. But as you can see, a couple different views here that uh, it's all painted up, looking good. And like I said earlier, I, I go th through this once in a while when I'm doing regular maintenance and check the fastener tightness and nothing's ever loosened up. Now, uh, I'll repeat again, I did do a little modification to where that hitch goes that I will cover in the outro. That's about the only other difference that isn't covered in these photos here because, again, a lot of this was mock-up. So, But that pretty much completes the... Uh, segment of this video or the whole video pretty much about how I uh, designed and fabricated the hitch for my Concourse 14. And as they say in showbiz, that's a wrap. <laughs> so this is again the way I did my trailer hitch on the Concourse 14. Um, it's not necessarily the way it should be done. I'm not saying that this is an instructional or a tutorial video. It's the way again I did it. So I wanted to go over a couple points relative to that as we do this outro. Number one, um, the welds are good welds. They may not look as pretty as you'd like or whoever is watching this, and I'm sure if it gets a lot of views eventually I'm going to get some comments on it. Um, if you don't like them, too bad. Do it yourself. But the bottom line is I have a good track record when it comes to welding with my welder. This is just but one thing that I've welded that's a fairly critical component. Um, stage left is my Magna sidecar rig which you may have seen in the background of other videos. It has a custom front end. The entire front end of the bike is custom. And I, that's, that's homemade basically and never had a problem. And it's been welded up to exactly the same uh, materials essentially as far as well wire, gas, and techniques that I did on this trailer hitch. This trailer hitch is over-engineered. Um, I believe that it's stronger than the commercially available ones. And that is also shared by various people who have seen it uh, firsthand that also own the commercially available ones. While I believe that this is engineered stronger than a commercially available hitch, um, as far as cost effectiveness goes, um, doing it in-house the way I did it um, is definitely not cost effective when you factor in hours. Materials maybe, but not hours. Uh, a commercially available hitch, I don't know, four to $600 range, whatever they are now, um, would be definitely more cost effective than doing it yourself uh, when you factor in hours because it took me, like I said, about a week to do, and I put a lot of hours into this. I couldn't even begin to guess how many hours are into it. Uh, but again, I like doing things myself because I like making sure it's done right, and it's done the way I want to do it, not necessarily the way I would do it if I was selling them, which I'm not going to do. I'm not gonna produce these for sale. There are companies that do that, and more power to them. So finally, I'll discuss the changes I made in its present form as far as what I have and what I'm using it for towing right now. What I ended up doing was I took that piece of metal off that was the tongue, I guess you want to call it the tongue of the trailer and changed it over to a really fat piece of aluminum. Uh, as the length that you can see, I think it's about three inches or so. And it's a quarter inch or three eighths aluminum plate that I had that I cut that out of. The reason why I did that was is because the steel rust is very difficult to uh, paint that and keep it from rusting because you know it gets it gets beat on with a trailer it gets beat on with the safety change and things and things like that so that's why I changed it to aluminum it was just more practical definitely strong enough we're only talking a teeny bit of length here so it's uh, it's fine uh, the safety chain hooks that you see next to it 
uh, are also uh, something that wasn't put on during initial fabrication, at least not in my photos. I put that out afterwards after I actually got the trailer and then figured out what I needed to use. So that's pretty much it. Um, that covers everything that I wanted to cover as far as updating it to this day, to this date, uh, and covering some other information in the outro. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, again, this is not how to do it, it's how I did it. And until next time, thanks for watching. I'm Tom, Motor Resto LLC, Braden in Florida. Take care. Okay, so I forgot a couple things, and uh, Ichabod here is going to help me explain them to you. There he is in his glory. Um, I forgot to tell you about tire changes that I promised earlier in the video. Um, you can't take the tire off the back naturally with this like you normally would while it's on the center stand. Um, well, you can and you can't. I do all my tires in-house anyway, tire changes, so I have a lift where I can just take the back section out and the tire goes down through that section. It's pretty easy to, to change at that point. If I had to change it in the field though, and I was uh, on the center stand, what I'd end up doing is getting a couple of uh, big guys to help out. We find some um, two by fours or some, we can go ahead and put those under the center stand and heave this thing up so we have a heck of a lot more room under the rear tire and then we shouldn't have any problem getting it off even with the hitch in place. The other thing I forgot, and I'm sure you're thinking about it, is yes, you do have to modify the plastic a little bit to get um, that uh, piece that comes down with that bracket I made, and that would be for any hitch. Uh, that penetrates through the plastic, penetrates literally, and you <laughs> you have to make a relief cut in that uh, plastic to get that thing back in. So yeah, you got to modify the plastic, but uh, you know, uh, it, it's your bike. You can cut it the way you want. So I just wanted to cover those two things. So now we're done. Thanks for watching.